Lately I've been itching to make a project uh, that would be bigger and a little bit more fun. Something I can put out in the yard and see how it deals with the weather. So I thought it would be nice to hand build something. Uh, it's also a good opportunity to try to max out the size of the piece I've put in my kiln. Uh, my kiln has a 22 inch interior diameter. So I had to keep this within approximately 24 inches uh, when I made it so that it would shrink and fit. So I decided to make a flower, uh, a daffodil really, that would combine both throwing the center portion as well as rolling a slab and making the petals and going through the process of assembling it and firing it and glazing it and firing it again and hopefully at the end the piece could be hung on a gate and we can see how it looks. So I use a sponge to add a little texture and more of a flower-like fluting up the centerpiece. And then I roll a couple slabs to make the petals. My bats are just under 12 inches around and so I use the bats as a rough measurement tool to ensure that I wouldn't have much more than a 24 inch span on this flower. And while the slab is still soft, I laid it on a piece of foam and just tried to work in some natural ribbing on the leaves or rather on the petals. You can see at this point it's still quite soft. So I set each of these petals up on their own bat with foam blocks, uh, kind of taco shaped, to ensure that as they dried they had the shape I wanted. So once the clay stiffened up a little bit, I wanted to do a rough assembly just to see how this is going to come together. Is it going to be even in the ballpark? Do I have any funny shapes I need to adjust? One thing I thought I needed to do was perhaps tighten them up a little bit, have a larger contact point in between each of the petals. And you'll see in a moment that I'm going to be using wax paper, or at least in the beginning. And that's because I was under the impression, or rather it was my plan, to have three separate pieces that were not connected. I really thought it would be better to have these three petals all connected the next three petals on a separate shelf in the kiln all connected and then the centerpiece and after glazing I would connect them all they would have holes in the center and we would connect them after the fact uh, the more I thought about it the more that just did not make sense certainly there would be advantages in installing this outside to have it in three pieces uh, mainly it seemed that having some sort of a thin rubber bushing in between each piece and uh, perhaps a bolt going through them all would allow them to have a little bit of flexibility if say a branch from a tree fell and hit it at least that's what I was thinking at the time but one of the downsides of trying to fire these pieces separately is if the petals move uh, they don't get to move together at the same time if they slump in the kiln which of course they will and and uh, inevitably did. It would mean that they potentially wouldn't fit together if they were fired separately depending on how they warp or move. So I continued to assemble this keeping the two layers separate for a little bit but you'll see I come back and I join the whole thing together eventually which I think was the right move.
So once I had it all put together, I simply went around looking for opportunities to add a little clay or work one of the seams of the tool to ensure that everything uh, looked well connected. Specifically, I wasn't sure how well these pedals were going to connect to each other because uh, they were both a little uh, more on the leather hard side and I didn't want to deform them by simply pinching them hard against each other so instead I lifted them up and slipped and scored and added another little piece which is slightly visible from the side but I think is going to add a lot to their strength and is a necessary step. So my strategy on how I was going to put this in the kiln uh, is simply to put it up on top of a bowl an upside down bowl and I want a clean spot in the middle of the flower where I don't get any underglaze and I don't get any glaze so I took the time in the beginning to get that waxed which really ended up being helpful so this is a Duncan Ceramics yellow underglaze I had it, it looked like it was going to be about the right color so I thought it was good use to uh, use that up I ended up putting on two coats and as it dried it looked uh, quite a bit lighter so it was really easy to see where I needed to add more. Now, this is the clear that I'm going to put over the underglaze and I thought it turned out not to be the gr greatest idea in the world but I'd use the uh, top of a garbage can because it was pretty wide. It just wasn't quite wide enough. So, no big mishaps. It's not like it got bumped off and spilled all over the place. It was kind of exciting trying to pour it back into the bucket later, but as you can see, the flower did not really fit. So I went around and dipped each of the petals and then came back and poured over the top. It, it worked fine and I got a nice even coat. And I did switch to a deeper bowl uh, for dipping the center of the flower so I could get the whole thing. So here it is. I wanted to show you I worked up some copper wire to mount this. This first one we're going to mount on a gate in the backyard. I'd eventually like to put this on a, on a pole in the bushes or wherever but uh, for now we're going to hang it on a gate and we're going to see how it likes being outside and we'll hang it on this wire and here it is installed well that was a fun project i hope you enjoyed it as well please make sure to like and subscribe <laughs>